and I want to know what this peacock motherfucker on the cover is all about because he is terrifying. But they were only $10. $5 each. Steal, okay? Steal. It's your girl Jay and today I'm here with a book haul with 20 books that I have either bought or been gifted by publishers so without further ado let us get started. I'm gonna go over the ones that I bought myself first just because they're on the top of the pile but the first two books I just bought literally yesterday. They are Delilah Green Doesn't Care and Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail. These are both by Ashley Herring Blake. I've read this one and I gave it five out of five stars. I just really wanted to have this one on my shelf and then when I saw that this one was also available I scooped it up but they were only ten dollars. Five dollars each. Steal. Okay? Steal. But this one follows Delilah Green, who is a photographer. She really hates her hometown, but her sister Astrid convinces her to come back and shoot her wedding. There she meets single mom Claire, and they kind of spark a little romance going on. And then this is the companion novel. And this one follows Astrid, who is Delilah's sister, and she is a designer struggling with her career a little bit, but then she has the breakthrough of a lifetime when she is asked to be the designer for a hit TV show. And then she meets the grand daughter of Prue Everdeen who is the person who asked her to be on this show and she is the lead carpenter of the show and she doesn't expect sparks to fly but sparks fly. We love a good rom-com. I'm very excited and like this one was so good so I'm very excited to have it on my shelf. Then the next two books that I bought are uh, very popular book talk books and I just want to know what all the hype is about and so I found them on Facebook Marketplace for only $25 and they are Fourth Wing and Iron Flame by Rebecca Yarrells. Like I said, I just want to be a part of the hype train and see what everybody talks about. I know this is a very like mixed series. People either absolutely love it or really really hate it so I want to see where I fall. I really like dragon stories so I'm hoping I fall on the I'm obsessed with these but I guess we'll see. But $25 for these is a ridiculous price because like when you look on Facebook marketplace these things sell for like $200. It's ridiculous. And then I also got one book from my friend Molly Lakovich. She wrote a book where I am features as a character which I think is so freaking cool but it is that there's something in the woods by Molly Lakovich and like I said I am the main character. This is probably the best book that she has ever written. I give it five out of five stars. It is so freaking good but it basically follows Jay who escaped a mental institution and she's running through the woods trying to get away and she stumbles across a cabin in the woods. She ends up passing out because it is a snowstorm and she's very tired from running through the woods. And then when she wakes up she meets the owner of this cabin, Lori, and realizes that he is very mysterious. He's not telling her some things but he's kind of the only thing that is going to keep her alive until the snowstorm is gone. And then things get a little bit interesting and you just need to read the book in order to find out what those interesting things are. But it is so freaking good. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So I'm gonna leave the link down below for you to go get a copy for yourself but Thank you so much, Molly, for sending this to me. I'm very excited to add it to my shrine shelf of all your books, so <laughs> thank you. And then I also got a book from my friend Nicole. We trade books all the time, and she was selling this one, and I was like, hey girl, can I have that? Can I have that book? So she very kindly gave it to me, but it is The Once in the Future Witches by Alex E. Haro. I've always wanted to read this book just because it says witches and then it was also one of my like friends tell you what to read books like two years ago and I never read it because I never got a copy of it. So now I have it so I can finally complete that challenge even though it was two years ago. Okay now all the rest of the books are all from publishers. They're either finished copies or arcs. But the first one I'm very excited about it is the first book in a series that I read. It's a duology. I didn't particularly like the second book, so I just like to pretend that it is the only book in the duology, but it is also The Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I give this five out of five stars when I read it. It's a pirate princess book with magic, and like I said, I just pretend the second one doesn't exist, but the first one is Chef's Kiss. So good. Next up, I have Late Bloomer by Maisie Eddings. I am so excited to have this one. It is a sapphic romance. It's Opposites Attract, which I am a big fan of, and I just am obsessed with this cover, so I'm very excited. It also came in a, like, bubble package with this 
cover on it and it was left on my doorstep so I hope all my neighbors saw it and know what kind of books I'm into. Next up is Blood and Fury. This is by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. This is the second book to Chaos and Flame, which I gave, I think, 4.5 or 5 stars. I can't remember. I loved that book. I'm very excited to have this in my hands. I didn't even know it was coming out with a sequel, so when the publisher emailed me and was like, hey, you want a copy? I was like, excuse me, yes I do. I very much do. I obviously don't want to tell you what this book is about since it is a sequel, but the first one has dragons and phoenixes and that's all you need to know. Then the next book I have is The Last Blood Carver. This is by Vanessa Lee. This one sounds so good. It's about a girl who is a blood carver which means that she is able to alter human biology by a touch and if that doesn't sound like very intriguing to you I don't know what will. Next up is Spin of Fate by A.A. A. Vora. This one sounds so interesting. It says break the skies, wake the gods and the inside says magnificent beasts, unforgiving magic, and epic battles. That's all I need to hear. I think it sounds so good and I want to know what this peacock motherfucker on the cover is all about because he is terrifying. Next up I have The Return of Ellie Blake by Amiko Jean. This one follows a detective whose little sister went missing years ago so she has dedicated her life to trying to find missing girls. A girl named Ellie Black has been missing for years and then one day she returns. Ellie's not talking or telling anything about what happened or who she's protecting so this kind of lights the fire underneath the detective's ass to try to figure out where these missing girls are and I think it sounds so stinking good. Next up is We Used to Live Here by Marcus Clay. Were, and this one is actually going to become a Netflix movie starring Blake Lively, which sounds very, very fun. But it basically follows a queer couple who flip houses. One day they score the house of a lifetime and they are trying to fix it up and a family knocks on the door and says that they actually lived there three years ago and they want to show their kids around. So being a people pleaser, Eve lets them into the house and then strange things start to happen. The family's toddler goes missing, a ghostly presence shows up in the basement, and the family doesn't really take the hint that it's their time to leave and things get a little bit sinister so I am so intrigued by this. I think it sounds so good. Next up is The Paris Affair by Pip Drysdale. This follows Harper Brown who is kind of an expert at criminal things if you will. Um, she's also an expert at getting out of relationships and the quickest time that she has done this is three minutes getting rid of a man so we love her but then she doesn't follow her advice and she actually gets her heart broken and moves to Paris in order to fulfill her career goal of becoming an investigative journalist. She talks her way into a job and she meets an artist named Noah X. Then Harper finds herself entangled in a web of lies and a murderer is trying to get her and it's her trying to figure out how to get out of this. Next I have The Ballad of Darcy and Russell by Morgan Matson. I didn't even know Morgan Matson had another book coming out but here we are. It's basically this girl who's going off to college and she She's kind of leaving everything behind and while she's at the bus stop waiting to go she meets a boy. They end up spending the day together kind of waiting until the bus comes and they kind of fall for each other and it's them trying to figure out what to do next because she's leaving. So, is it even worth it? Next, I have Not Your Crush's Cauldron. This is by April Asher, and I actually have the um, other book in the series right here, Not Your Ex's Hexes. Have I read it? No, this is actually the second and third book. The first book is Not the Witch You Wed. I don't own that one. I don't know if you actually have to read them in order or if they're just companion novels. I should probably look that up, but at least I have the second and the third one. It obviously follows witches which I am a fan of, as I've been saying. Then I have This Book Won't Ban by Samira Ahmed. It says that it is a poignant novel about censorship, book banning, and teen activism. So. Next up is At Her Service by Amy Spaulding. This one follows a talent assistant who tries to take charge of her life by downloading a self actualization app, and she finds queer love. And like I've said, I love me some queer love. I also think that the girl looks like a total badass, so I'm very intrigued to know more about her. Next, I have Wicked Problems by Max Gladstone. This is the second book in The Craft Wars. The first book is called Dead Country. It's right there. I don't own it, so I don't actually know 
if it is a good series, but I am very intrigued by it. It says gods and lawyers battle for the soul of the world in the action-packed second volume of Max Gladstone's Craft Wars, an epic fantasy like no other. Like I said, I obviously don't know what the first book is about because I did not look it up. And I don't really want to read what it's about because it is the second book and I don't want to spoil the first one for me. But I will say that the tagline does intrigue me, so I am going to have to find a copy of the first book. And then the final book that I have is Trying to Sleep in the Bed You Made by Virginia DeBerry and Donna Grant. I won this off of Goodreads. So this one follows two women who have been best friends since childhood. They are completely opposite. One thinks that a man is going to complete her, the other one is very brainy and more focuses on her career. And then there's a man named Marcus who links these two women because of the childhood trauma they all endured together and they are bound by secrecy. So I'm very intrigued about what that secret is, but it's basically them trying to navigate those relationships. All right, everybody, so those were the 20 books that I have either bought myself, been given by my friends, or publishers have sent me. Let me know down below if you have read any of these and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!